Hello, in this video we're going to be talking about data types. Now data types can sound completely irrelevant, you know, information is information. Uh, but it does matter in computing, and some, some languages and systems more than others, what type the data is. In databases it's particularly important what type of data it's storing, because databases are built to retrieve information very quickly and efficiently. Uh, and some programming languages are what's called have typed variables, and some are what's called loosely typed. PHP is an example of that. Uh, you simply set your variable as, you know, uh, dollar sign balance, and it can be any of the data types. But, um, but some languages are much more pernickety about it, and you'll in fact need to take, if you've got something that's in one type and you want to use it as another, you actually have to cast it. So you have to say, use this, but pretend that it's this. So that's why data types are important. So let's look at our main data types. Um, first and foremost, we have integers, which is whole numbers. You know, we have one, two, three, four, um, all the way up to, you know, the biggest number you can imagine. Uh, so that's an integer. And I was going to say something clever about them, but for the life of me, oh, that's what I was going to say. You can have either signed or unsigned. So you can assume that everything's a positive number, or you can have them actually going into negative one, negative two. And depending on whether they're signed or unsigned, it actually matters for how much you can fit into a particular amount of memory. So, you know, 64-bit systems and 32-bit systems do have limits to the numbers you can use, but if you're putting half of your number range underwater, if you've got it signed, then you can only deal with a smaller set of numbers. So signed and unsigned are two important concepts to remember, as are integers. The next one is strings. Now, strings are just text. Uh, the thing about text is you can have all sorts of characters in there, uh, but you can't do maths with it. Whereas an integer, the program knows how to do maths with it. Um, whereas if you add um, hello and there, um, if you actually do that in some languages, it will concatenate them, it will put them together as a string, but there is no actual answer to hello plus there. Uh, this is not a thing. So that's your string. A uh, very common type to use, but not super useful in some ways, because again, you can't do that. But you can do things like checking within substrings, and you can concatenate strings and put them together, and you can trim them by taking content in and out. So strings, lots of strings. Let's see what else we've got in here. Uh, we've got a floating point, such as 3.14. Uh, now, this might actually seem like, why is this a different thing to an integer? Well, the reason is because of the way that computers store numbers. It's very easy for them to store an integer because you can do that very easily in binary, in you know, zeros and ones. But if you actually want it, there's no uh, decimal point in that system. So you actually have to store a floating point or a decimal in two parts. One is the integer itself, so let's say one, uh, and the other is the expedient, I think it is, or, and there's another name for it, significant, um, which is basically telling you what to do with the decimal point, how many places to move it. So if we go back to our example of pi, or pi approximate, 3.14, the integer would be um, 3.314, uh, and the exponent, I think, is minus two, because we're moving the decimal point two places. And so likewise, if we wanted to say 100, and this is just a general maths concept, we'd have 1 with the exponent of 2, so it's two zeros. You're moving the decimal point the other way. And so it's a way of getting around the fact that computers don't natively speak in decimals is by storing it in two components. Uh, and the final one that I want to talk about is Booleans. Now, a Boolean can either be true or false. Now, depending on the language, it might be a capital T for true and a capital F for false, or it might be lowercase, or it might not matter. And sometimes you see them expressed as zero and one, and lots of languages are happy with a zero or a one for a Boolean. Um, they might sound like, why would you not just use zero and one? But um, I actually use Booleans heaps. I quite like them. They kind of sound like you know a lot about computing when you talk about Booleans. But it's a really good way of saying, you know, um, user can proceed. And then I check something, you know, do they have enough credit? And if they don't, then I change user can proceed equals false. And then later on, I'll check user can proceed. So it's a really good way of running something through multiple checks where just one of the checks can be enough to change their status. That's our journey through data types. And it's worth being able to identify all of those and to be able to use them confidently uh, in your exam and just generally in your work.